you know, people think that Christianity is, you know, anti-science when honestly, Christian, I, I got to break it to the world, but you know, Christianity gave you science, <laughs> you know, like that, that's who, you know, you have to thank Christianity for science. Yeah. It's actually really tough to watch a Neil deGrasse Tyson's sort of uh, reconstruction of history and his narrative of how science developed and how it was antithetical to religion and uh, that, that stuff's gross. Like, uh, and it's just uneducated. I mean, look, you can be a brilliant physicist and actually be terrible at history. You know, yeah. it's so Neil deGrasse Tyson, I think, is using his authority. Like, you, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about the Cosmos series. Mm -hmm. yep. he, he's using his authority as a physicist to try to pontificate on matters historic and theological. And it's just, that's a, that's a, uh, misuse of his academic credentials and authority honestly yeah uh, and they bring they bring up the galileo situation where the church you know forbade him to teach about you know his theories about the earth and the sun and that that church was like all you know they're all of four you know that the sun the earth was the center of the universe and honestly i mean if you look at the history that was not the case at all right it was the fact it was the fact that galileo was going about his his method, his approach was, was, was very like in your face and, and wasn't going through the proper channels to get where he wants to go. And, and, and if he would have done that, he probably, he would have been fine. It was just the fact that he was trying to do things that were for the time he was living in against the, the proper channels of, so, cause they didn't want people to just believe anything. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That, I mean, that, and that environment was different from our environment in terms in those, in that way. But I think too, it was also just an academic discussion, right? Like Aristotle was the reigning basically authority on almost everything at that time. So it was really in large part, there were scripture verses and stuff like that, and passages that were brought up. But you know, it was also a debate between Galileo's theories and Aristotle's. It's like, well, is, is that not, you know, worth debating yeah, who, and discussing? You should just like, yeah, you should, that's worthy of at least academic discussion. I mean, there has there has to be sort of context for all that all that we look at. We just can't look right. at things from our twenty first century point of view and say, "Oh man, what a horrible uh, travesty!" You know, when we don't even take into account. That's that's where the history, from my point of view, comes in. Is that you have to contextualize everything you look at historically. You can't just a apply your twenty first century uh, worldview on on things that happened five hundred years ago. And that just the, the, the people don't even they wouldn't even think the way you do. They don't even have a, a concept of your understanding of reality, let alone, um, you know, what you think about, you know, physics. <laughs> so I, I just find that I just find that funny. The person who came up with the theory of the Big Bang uh, was a Catholic priest. I, I just I find that so fascinating that, you know, we adhere to this theory about the Big Bang, but then we don't really realize that the person that came up with it was a Catholic priest. Um, I can't remember his name. You can actually, uh, like, we can Google that later. But um, but I think that's fascinating, too. So it, basically, in a nutshell, science is, I don't think science is at all at odds with Christianity. Um, and I think that, honestly, I think science kind of gives Christianity some weight with certain things that we believe, like something can't come from nothing. 